about midway through the afternoon, I reached over and I grabbed my black racks and I did a short rattling sequence, uh, just hoping to pick up a buck out, out in the CRP. Um, hope to draw him in, get his curiosity going and see if I could get him to come over and, uh, and see what was going on on my side of the river. And that's, in my opinion, what got this entire hunt started. Well, about 10 minutes after my rattling sequence, I, I looked across the river and I noticed this buck kind of cruising the edge. I didn't get a very good look at him. I wasn't sure exactly what he was. I wasn't sure if he had, if he had hung up in that cover or if he'd moved off um, to where I couldn't see him anymore. I decided I'd see if he was looking for a fight and uh, I hit him with a grunt. No response. I picked it up to the next level. I hit him with a little bit of a growl. No response whatsoever. Um, snort wheeze. Nothing. Obviously this guy's not looking for a fight. I'm gonna see if he's looking for love. I picked up my call, I went ahead and slid it on up to the doe position. I gave him one doe and estrus bleat. And wouldn't you know it, here he comes across the river. He's coming. I'll never forget seeing that buck cross the river or the sound of that ice breaking. Just something absolutely unbelievable. Um, something I've never seen before. Something I'll probably never see again. But he's coming across the river, breaking through that ice. He finally gets up on a solid piece. He slips and slides a little bit on the ice, finally gets his feet underneath him, and uh, boom, up the bank, here he comes. So he comes up the side of the bank, uh, he stops, he does a little bit of a standing scrape, and uh, he looks to his left, and he looks to his right. He's trying to figure out where that doe is that he could hear, and uh, thankfully he decided he'd come around on the upwind side of the tree and see if she was over there, and now it's game time. On this particular hunt, the most critical thing was being able to communicate with this buck. And this is where it all comes back to having the right piece of equipment, uh, the right tools to aid in your success. Grunted a couple times. Still didn't see him. Snort wheezed at him. Nothing. Never moved. Thought he was gone. I just leaned back against the tree and took my extinguisher out and just put it up on dough. It's still there. And I got one little bleed out. And he came right across the came right across the frozen river, slipping on the ice. Unbelievable. Soaking wet, old, chocolate-faced, beautiful 10-pointer. This was just an incredible hunt, and uh, communication is what it really came down to. Having the right tools and having the, the knowledge and the know-how to communicate uh, with deer and put them where you want is what it all came down to. Um, had I not had a call with me on this particular day, this buck would have skated by on the other side of the river and would have been gone forever. Um, it took me a little while to figure out what he wanted, but with the extinguisher, that's what's so great is I was able to 
to sort through and give him different calls until I found the one he wanted. He wasn't looking for a fight, he was looking for love. I picked up my call, I went ahead and slid it on up to the doe position. I gave him one doe and estrus bleat. And, and that's finally what did it. That's finally what brought him across the river and, and put him in, the la in our laps and, and uh, offered us a shot. And the craziest thing about the entire deal is when we were sitting back watching the footage over, we'd actually called in a second buck who was standing at the base of the tree and I, we had no idea. I released the arrow and uh, you see the buck kind of skirt off on the edge of the frame, but really proves how communicating with deer um, just ups your odds all that much more. If you're going to the field without a call and an understanding of how to communicate with deer, you're missing opportunities and you're putting yourself at a huge disadvantage. There's several key things to this hunt, in my opinion, allowed Colton to take this buck. One is to reach out and expand his hunting distance, which allowed him to find the buck. Second was the understanding on how to communicate and manipulate the behavior of the buck by doing various different communication scenarios. And the most important aspect of this hunt was directional calling. When Colton made the decision to turn his call to the upwind side so the sound was coming from that direction, that was everything. The deer comes across the river, he stops at the tree, he looks left, he looks right. He makes a decision to go to that upwind side because of directional calling. If Colton points his call at the deer or to the downwind side, it's game over. But he made the right choice, and to me, that was the key to his success in this hunt. For a limited time, when you order the Extinguisher Deer Call, you'll receive a free black rack. That's right, you'll receive a free black rack rattling system with instructional DVD. Just pay separate processing and handling. Don't wait until all of the free black racks are gone. Order now. Freeblackrack.com